So hi. Hi. <laughs> I am Melissa from Igalia and welcome to the Rainbow Treasure Map, a talk about advanced color management on Linux with AMD Steam Deck. So first, if you are not used to the topic, you may find some useful links in this list. And uh, when we talk about colors in the graphs chain, we should keep in mind that we have a wide variety of uh, source content colorimetry, a variety of output display device, and also internal processing. And then user ex users expect uh, consistent color representation across all these devices. So to get it, the user space can use uh, GPU accelerated color management. However, uh, this requires an interface with the display kernel drivers that is currently missing from the uh, DIMK mass framework. So since April, I have been bothering, sorry, the DRM community by sending email pet sets with more than 30 pets from the work of uh, Joshua and me to add uh, driver-specific color properties uh, to the AMD display uh, driver. Meanwhile, discussions on uh, defining a generic color management interface are still ongoing in the community, and we are still not clear about the diversity of color capabilities among hardware uh, vendors. Uh, to bridge this gap, we have defined a color pipeline for a game scope that fits the latest versions of uh, AMD hardware. Uh, it delivers advanced color management features for gamut mapping, uh, ADR rendering, SDR on ADR, and ADR on SDR. Uh, so, AMD frequently release new GPU and APU generations, and each generation comes with a new DCN version with display hardware improvements. Uh, for this work, we use AMD Steam Deck hardware and its kernel driver uh, as a reference. Uh, the Steam Deck is an APU uh, with DCN301 uh, display driver. It's part of the DCN3 family. And knowing this is important because newer AMD DCN drivers uh, inherit uh, implementations from previous families. Uh, additionally, uh, each generation of AMD hardware may introduce new color capabilities. So it's important to familiarize yourself with uh, your specific hardware. Uh, the AMD driver in the Linux kernel space consists of three layers. Uh, the first, I will, uh, yeah, top and down. Uh, the first, the DIM KMS framework, uh, then the AMD Display Manager, the DM, and the AMD Display Core, DC. So we extended the color interface exposed to the user space by leveraging existing DRM resource and connecting them with the driver specific functions for managed color properties. Uh, so to, uh, to connect DC color capabilities and the DRM API, uh, we needed uh, to do a significant transformation of the uh, color management functions and helpers uh, in the AMD Display Manager. Uh, AMD Display Manager is the Linux dependent part uh, of the driver that connects the AMD DC interface uh, to the DRM KMS framework. The, it's the in, it intermediates communication too. So, uh, and the AMD DC is the OS agnostic layer. Uh, so I examining its code uh, that is shared between platforms, different platforms and different DC versions, uh, help us uh, understand the AMD color pipeline and hardware capabilities. Uh, since uh, the machinery for hardware settings and resource management are already implemented there, or yeah, most of that. So now we arrived, uh, I started to talk about AMD DC, and so let's take a look in the AMD Display Core Next, the newest architecture uh, for AMD Display Hardware. Uh, here uh, uh, we have two blocks that uh, have the capability uh, to manage colors. The display pipe and plane, DPP, for pre-blending uh, color adjustment, 
and uh, multiple pipe and plane combine for uh, post-blending color transformations. Uh, so now let's see what we have pre-blending in the DRM uh, API. This is what we have <laughs> for color management uh, before blending. Okay, it's, uh, I can say nothing, but it's not completely true because we have uh, color encoding and uh, color range properties for the input uh, color space conversion. But uh, both input and output uh, color space conversion are already uh, linked to the generic, uh, the Q uh, generic API and it's not part of this driver specific work. So uh, in case you are not familiar with the MD shared code, I am not an AMD expert either, but uh, I talked about it less in the last XDC. In short, we need to draw a map, link uh, points, and navigate there. Uh, we have, you can see that we have some uh, post-blending color properties uh, on DRM, but the, uh, there is nothing uh, before blending yet. But thanks to the shared code, much of the hardware programming for AMD was already implemented in the DC layer. You can see uh, that uh, below. So, uh, and it's not only the properties that was missing, but also the connections to the DC interface. So that's when our search begins. Uh, looking at the, the color capabilities of the hardware, we arrived to this, okay, here. Oh, where is it? Oh, sorry, not so good. Okay, we arrive at this uh, set of uh, color properties. Uh, um, I can say that it was not that like that because we uh, built this pipeline and discovered our needs uh, throughout each iteration. But okay, the first uh, property was the the plane de gamma. Uh, it was our first driver-specific properties before blending. Uh, it's used to linearize uh, the color space from encoded value, values to light linear values. Uh, here we can use uh, transfer, a predefined transfer function and also a uh, user lookup table. Uh, I will call TF and LUT from now. So uh, predefined transfer function are in, in for this block is a hard-coded cube that go to the D gamma ROM block. And uh, this is the, the list of the, uh, the transfer function that the drive support for this block. So we also have a one-dimensional LUT uh, that has this, the usual size of 1D LUT in the DRM's uh, subsystem. That is the uh, 4096. And it's an array of DRM color LUT uh, elements that goes to another, a different block in the, in the hardware, the, uh, the DPP gamma correction block. Uh, then, finally, we have our first path unlocked. And uh, now we will introduce the next one, the color transformation matrix, CTM, for color space conversions. Uh, yeah, the link. <laughs> So it's a three by five fixed point matrix uh, that goes to the DPP gamut remap. Uh, it's a, another block, and uh, but here we need to pay attention that was there was a trap here because uh, both post blending and pre blending uh, was uh, going to uh, were going to the same block, the pre blending uh, gamut remap. So we needed to uh, work here to detach uh, this uh, CRTC CTM from there, I think. Yeah, that from there to, to the, the right way. Yeah, so now each CTMs go, go to uh, the right uh, path, yeah. And we have another path unlocked. Next, the ADR multiplier. It's a factor applied uh, to the color values uh, of an image to increase their overall brightness. Uh, yeah, it's uh, useful for converting image, images from uh, 
uh, standard uh, dynamic range to a high dynamic range, ADR, and it can range beyond zero and one, so subsequent transforms need to use P PQ uh, uh, transfer functions. Uh, then we need a 3D LUT, and, but 3D LUT has a limited number of entries in each dimension, and we want to use it in, a, for, because of it, we want to use it in a color space that is optimized for uh, human vision. That means in a nonlinear space. Therefore, um, user space um, need one 1D LUT before 3D LUT to linearize content uh, before apply the 3D LUT, and then another one after that to uh, linearize content uh, for blending. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then this uh, first, the, the pre 3D LUT. Uh, Pre-3D-LUT curve is the shaper curve. Here we uh, enable two properties, one for predefined transfer function and another for one-dimensional LUT. Uh, but here the, there is no hard coded curve. Uh, what we do is uh, AMD has a color module that is uh, capable to calculate the, the predefined uh, curve from uh, predefined coefficients. Uh, and this is the list of supported uh, cubes. Uh, so what it, it does, as we have TF and LUT values, uh, the color module combine, uh, combines both and uh, into one LUT that goes to the DPP shaper round block. And 3D LUT is our rock star. 3D LUT is perfect for uh, complex color transformations and adjustment between uh, color channels. Uh, it's also more complex for manage and uh, require more computational resource. So the number of, that's why the number of entries is limited. Uh, so uh, an array and, the, and a 3D LUT uh, contains samples from the approximated curve uh, and uh, values between samples are uh, estimated by theta tetrahedral interpolation uh, and AMD. Uh, AMD support uh, 17 and uh, 9 as the size of a single dimension. And uh, the blue is the outermost dimension and red innermost. Uh, then we also need, uh, as I told you, a post 3D LUT curve and to linearize content, uh, the color space before blending. This is done by the blend TF and LUT properties. Uh, it uh, works similar to shaper LUT, that uh, there are no hardened cubes for blending uh, transfer, predefined transfer function. And, uh, and the cubes supported here are the same of the D gamma block uh, that is calculated by the color module. Uh, the resulting LUT goes to the DPP uh, blending gamma block. So we have uh, our, our pre-blending properties connected. Uh, okay, there was a conflict. Uh, if you see, there, was, there, was, there, is, uh, there is a conflict between the DRM CR, uh, CRTC D gamma and the DRM plane uh, D gamma. And uh, it, it is inevitable, and our approach now is not accepting uh, that both are set at the same time. Uh, we also optimized the, the color, uh, the conversion of the frame buffer to wire, to wire encoding by adding support to predefined uh, CRTC gamma, the gamma TF, the last one you can see. Uh, it operates similar to the shaper uh, TF, uh, no hard coded cube, and uh, the TF and LUT values combined uh, by the AMD color module, and uh, the resulting LUT goes to the MPC gamma RAM block. So this is the uh, AMD driver-specific color management pipeline. Uh, on Linux, and armed with this comprehensive knowledge, you are now ready to enjoy the rainbow treasure of AMD display hardware. And yeah, 
conquer the world of graphics and visual computing. Uh, this work, uh, in this work, uh, we have uh, now the game scope Steam Deck uh, embrace the color capabilities of the AMD GPU. Uh, and you can see in a high level, oh, the image is not so good, but yeah, it's just describing how we map uh, the game scope color pipeline uh, with each um, block, uh, color block on AMD. And Okay, I, my time is not okay, but okay. So uh, DRM uh, subsystem contain not only this treasure map, but many other hidden treasures from different vendors. Uh, and that means that the search for the rainbow treasure is not over. Uh, we want more complex transformation and adjustment available in Linux. And we want to expose all GPU capabilities from all hardware vendors to the Linux user space. Uh, finally, I would like to thank Joshua <laughs> and Harry for all the fun in this collaborative work. Uh, also, uh, I can say we made it together. And also Rodrigo Siqueira and other uh, AMD display uh, developers uh, for the avail availability and all the feedback that they provided. Uh, everyone in the DRI community, who contributed to, to this adventure. And yeah, the amazing part of this, the power and uh, impressive uh, part of this work is not here, comes next with Joshua and the Rainbow, Rainbow Forex. So yeah, is it? Thank you and questions. Uh, sorry, uh, questions? Someone want to ask something? Okay, you can ask me, Joshua. <laughs> Next, <laughs> not me, sorry. <laughs> Nobody is raising rents. Yeah. Rents. Okay, one more. Uh, Is it working? Yeah, is it working? Uh, so the question uh, is the following. Uh, if I remember correctly, uh, this uses the proprietary uh, proper properties. Uh, I mean, this work, isn't it? Uh, it uh, you mean how to use it? No, I mean that uh, your work uses driver-specific properties, not the generic. Yeah. Yeah, OK. Uh, do you plan to make them available to, uh, to other drivers? In some way, I saw the uh, concurrent proposal. What, what, what is the plan for the convergence between? Oh, I see. Yes. Yeah, this is like our short, short term uh, proposal to, to have something to start to uh, understand uh, what we have available in the system, in the subsystem. But our uh, long term plan is to, ha to uh, adopt. Uh, this in a generic API in the generic interface the the it will be easier for MD because we already mapped everything it's just uh, a matter of switch to a different interface but the you know the programming setup and uh, resource management is uh, are done so but our long term plan is to uh, adhere the generic interface yeah Which user mode did you validate this with? I didn't get. So. Uh, which user mode did you validate this pipeline with? Which user mode? Yes. The, you which mean is. user mode driver? Yes. Uh, driver. But in the KMAS, we use a generic interface. It's not uh, by user mode driver. I mean, it. I've, it's not like Mesa. Is that thing? Do you, do you mean which composer? Yes. Yeah. Which I meant which composer? Oh, the use? game scope. Okay, so the game scope Composter, is plugged yeah. in with AMD specific properties, and that's how you validate. Yeah, game scope uh, use the drug okay. specific properties. Okay, right thank now. you. It's the next <laughs> presentation. We'll clarify you about how it works. Yeah. 
We have a question from the matrix. Uh, what is the situation with upstreaming the vendor specific proprieties? We usually don't allow driver specific yeah. properties nowadays. Yeah, it's still in place, I can say like that, but what we are doing is to use a guard for these properties, at least for who is interested in, uh, uh, you know, experiment and start to be more familiar with uh, the properties can uh, already play with that. And we are in the fourth version. I think it's maybe the last one, and we will, we will, we will, we will, we will yeah. it will be in the upstream uh, sooner, I think so. Because the generic API, as I said, uh, is on discussion, is still ongoing, so we will need a couple, well, uh, more time to uh, define it. Yeah. Time is over. Uh, thank you. Bye. <laughs>